Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of Rooftop Perspectives. The quote of the day, the pain will disappear once it has finished teaching you. I'm going to say that again. The pain will disappear once it has finished teaching you. That's a deep and very much profound statement that hit my heart today. And I wanted to share with you as I applied it to my life when I look back on my life. Oftentimes we are in a pained situation that doesn't let up because it's a situation that's not right for us or it's a situation that we need to learn from, right? It teaches us. You know, you get on a bike as a child and you know you have to balance on that bike. But when you fall, it's a lot of pain. You get a scraped knee, a scraped elbow, Hopefully you don't fall on your face. And if you do, you might lose a tooth. But nonetheless, you don't want the pain. The pain teaches you that you need to be more diligent in balancing yourself on that bike in order to enjoy the bike. But there's danger in that, that you can fall down. But it pushes you to learn that proper balance. Myself, I took it a step further. I wanted to learn how to ride a unicycle, a one-wheel bike. So even though most of us mastered the two-wheel bike, I had to not have uh, the security of a second wheel. Forget a tricycle. Forget a bicycle. So therefore, you know, I took a lot of spills. I took a lot of falls. But the pain of falling taught me a lesson. Right? It taught me that lesson. So we have to embrace it. But at the end of the day, it teaches us. And when we learn it, it's not going to come around no more. How many of us have gone through situations in life that were very painful, whether it was a breakup or an imbalanced relationship or a job that wasn't for us and didn't fit well with us because maybe their mission statement was against what we we're all about? Um, could have been a supervisor on the job, but there, were, there was pain and discomfort there. The pain and discomfort of being on a job that doesn't fit with you. And maybe you go to another job and there's another thing that bothers you, tells you that you need to pursue your own business, your own platform, what you need to do for yourself so you can control and work smoothly with what voice that you hear from the inside. The pain has helped you to go to another level. The pain of when people let you down, when people make you think that they are on your side, you know, they'll correct you whenever you're wrong, but... They're going to ride and die with you and you find out they've been hating you all along and trying to sabotage you all along. That pain will teach you. You see, that will teach you and it taught me that when I feel a certain discomfort and I feel a certain pain in a situation, you know what? I run toward it because I want that pain to teach me something. There are too many of us that stay in situations too long trying to negotiate with the pain. It's there to teach you a lesson. It will disappear once it has taught you. So if you sit there and say to yourself, you know what? I have a medical problem, a physical problem where there is pain. Do you just take a painkiller and just say, I'm going to live like this? And look at how many of us self-medicate ourselves with the drugs with, and with the liquor, which the liquor is a drug, with the sugar, which is a drug. The FDA, the Food and Drug Administration of the United States said if they knew now what uh, or knew then what they know now about sugar, they would classify it as a drug. That's to show you how powerful that is as far as the effect on us. So we do things to negotiate the pain, but we never learn a lesson. I'm not saying to go out there and jump up on something, fall down and bust or break your leg or bust your arm, whatever. That's not the kind of pain you want. But when you do feel discomfort in something, there's something that needs to be altered in your life, which means that there has to be a lesson in that. If you don't learn the lesson, you'll continue to live with the pain and you won't live a fulfilled life. It's like when I would go to the barber and get my hair cut, which I don't have that problem anymore because I shave it off all the time. And there's going to be a lot of people who say, you need to grow your beard. You need to grow. No, I'm not doing that. I ain't never doing that. This is Lance Scurve right here. This is the way people like me. This is the way I like myself. Anyway, any hair that was outside, you know, the round afros back in the 70s, any hair that was <clears throat> not behaving and out of that, sphere got cut off 
and they would comb more hair out to see what was beyond that sphere that the, that the uh, barber saw in his mind and he would cut it out until it was a perfectly round afro. But too many of us don't want to go to the barber. We don't want to deal with the pain of having to pay money to the barber to make our hair right. So we put it, push it down, push it down. And as soon as the wind blows us out again, and we don't want that. So that taught me and even that analogy that you're going to have to cut certain things out. You're going to have to understand and identify what it is first. You just can't go cutting off everything. But through the pain, you're going to have to deal with the pain while you figure out what it is that needs to be adjusted in your life. It could be multiple things. It could be one big thing. It could be several big things. But it teaches you to be cool instead of getting emotional and reacting to it. You say, okay, this is not a comfort right now. But I need to go through my life with a fine tooth comb and find out what it is that's bringing me into this place of pain and discomfort. How many of us do that? But we self-medicate. We go get high. We go get drunk. We want that buzz. Life is a buzz. There's something wrong with one who needs to self-medicate because if you got to medicate something that you're telling me that you got a problem that you don't want to face. Oh, and I know a lot of people who do drugs and have liquor issues and whatever. They got some serious, serious problems. You know what I mean? So, but they don't want to face it. I'm not going to play pretend. I like to face things head on, deal with things head on. If there's an issue with this person right here, I'm going to say it right to their face. Or even if they're running away, you have to deal with it. Because one thing I've always said is that I am not going to die from emotional constipation. I'm not going to die by holding all of this stuff in. Because once it finally comes out, and it will come out, boy, it's going to stink so bad. So clean your spiritual bowels and do not die from emotional constipation. Face the things that pain you. Face the things that bring discomfort into your life so you can live a life of ease. Like even today, I did so much today, but I stayed in and relaxed. I did things on a mental level, right? But I'm in a place where I don't have to have that sense of urgency that was almost getting to the point of being uncomfortable to me, that I have to churn out so much content a day. That means this thing ruled me. But the minute I relax and said, I'll do what I do as I move through my day, I'm getting more stuff out than ever before because my spiritual bowels are loose. So I'm absorbing more of the experience of life as I live life and everything that I put out and everything that I do, whether it's in front of the camera or not, is getting richer and richer and richer. You see, I've always felt that as you live life, it's like you're born with a blunt blade. Now, let me clarify, because also I say you're born with a clean slate. But what I mean by saying this, you're born with a blade that's not sharp and not blunt. It doesn't cut through life as easy because you don't understand life as you would years later. So the more experiences that you have is the more that it sharpens your blade. Oop, this won't happen again. Oop, that won't happen again. Oop, she won't get me that way. She didn't love me. She just wanted money. She didn't love me. She just wanted a green card. Uh, you know, he wasn't my friend. He just wanted to get on the platform and get famous. We took all his videos off. Oh, this, that, this, that. Boom. And you learn. And now, as we get older, right, we have sharpened this blade so that life, cutting through life, gets much, much easier. And we move through it in an effortless manner. And when other entities come around with the same old games that we had to go through in our pain to learn the lesson, to sharpen the blade, we spot it for what it is. Because sometimes we get to a point where we don't need any more sharpening. And sometimes when you over sharpen the blade, the blade can get too thin and snap. So you don't want that either. Learn from your lessons. The pain will teach you when it's time, once you learn your lesson. So don't run away from it. Analyze it. It's your life. Nobody knows your life like you. Don't run away from it. Don't be in denial. There are so many, and I say men, it's women too. But there's so many people, I'll just say people, that they carry the burden of molestation. Let's just pick things from out the sky. Let's just get real and nitty gritty. It might have been a young man was forced to perform oral sex on another man and he knows what happened but it pains him so as he gets older it's hard for him to maintain relationships with men 
we're talking about normal relationships, nothing sexual, because the closer they get to them, as far as liking them and, and emotional, is the more these things pop in their head. So something goes off in their head and they have to kill that relationship. Now they have to defend their manhood to the world, so they have to come off like this alpha male. And they have to control everybody around them because, you see, they had no control in that situation. And they question their manhood. They may even have desires from what happened to them because that was their first taste of, 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 a, of a twisted sexuality inflicted on a child. So when you see their manifestation now, you wonder why are they the way they are, but they hide a secret that they're in denial about. They're in pain about it. And they will begin to despise those who are comfortable with their life and their sexuality and their manhood. They get disgusted when they hear you talking about something that men talk about sometimes. Or speaking about human sexuality in a healthy fashion and they get mad and they, you shouldn't be talking this way. This is indecent. But deep down, what they're really living, they go back to the very thing that they don't like or that happened to them. That was an improper pain instead of going back and dissecting it and learning the lesson and straightening yourself out to which you're supposed to be. You have some people who grew up very poor. Right. <clears throat> and it's not about having lots of money, but they grew up dirt poor. So in their mind, they dreamt at a time when they would have lots of riches or wealth. Wealth and riches are two different things. I want wealth. I don't want riches. Riches can go like that. And they work hard to accrue these things and the world, world will applaud them. Oh, you're so successful. You're such a hard worker. It's not so much that they're running away from their childhood. And they still don't feel the joy of the accumulation of material goods that they have around them because in their mind there's still that poor little boy or poor little girl who may have been ridiculed for not having everything that the other children had. And one who may have had the opportunity to live a good life coming up who may not have had the riches but they're not caught up in that because you don't have that pain inside you to always want to have the biggest and the best and the most expensive to them you're at peace and they will despise you because you have a peace that they don't have so now they will come to you look i i just purchased a brand new jaguar suv and they're studying your eyes to see if you're jealous of them because they know they would be jealous of you because they feel the way to douse the pain that's inside of them is to buy things and you genuinely feel good for them. You say, man, this is a really nice truck. This thing really fits you. Oh, look at the leather that's inside. Look at the real wood grain on the dashboard. Oh, it's such a beautiful truck. I feel so good for you. And they're sitting there. This nigga supposed to be jealous of me. How is it that he doesn't think the same way I do? There's a lot of complex things going on in the minds of people around us. And I've always had the gift of discernment, but I kept my mouth shut. I always act like a clown while I got my eye on you. Ain't that something? This is really, really something. The pain that we have. We medicate it, but we don't want to go after the lesson that's in it to deal with learning so the pain can subside and eventually disappear. Isn't that something? our insecurities, the things we feel we're inept in areas and voids inside of our heart. We walk with these things, but we work so hard to look like the real thing and to appear to be healthy, but on the inside we are rotten. Not bad rotten, but rotten because of neglect of wanting to deal with the problem or the challenge, as I like to say. And we drive through this world, and I don't mean just through a vehicle, but we're doing the peripheral vision to see how a person's essence is, how their vibration is. And when you see somebody who has true peace of mind and can face themselves, they will despise you. And many times it will make good people really toxic people and sometimes bad people because they see your light and oftentimes that they don't deal with what's inside of them they will despise you because of your light. 
They will despise you for thinking good for them. They will despise you for encouraging them. They will, who do you think you are? That you have your voids filled up in that area and you're trying to help me. Like Dame Dash said, the very ones who come after you and will despise you are the very ones that you've helped. Those are the ones who are going to want to bring you down and tear you down. That is very wise. It is crazy to think about something like that. Because I know me, if anybody wants to try to help me with anything, I'm, I'm appreciative until long after the expiration date of that aid came. Hey man, here's $10, man. So and so, 10 years from now, I'm like, man, I'm, I thank you for what you did for me. I appreciate it. But some people, they don't think that way. So you really have to look beyond the surface when you deal with new entities and sometimes some of the ones that you swear in your corner because they could be brewing up something against you and all you're doing is merely trying to help and alleviate them from dealing with the pains that are there that keep them from learning the lesson. Anyway, just wanted to throw that at you. I'm going to keep them a little more short now so it's not too long. Just want to say salute to my brothers. Much love. Mwah. To my sisters, there's so much about human nature that I love. Um, it may not be situations that are, that are that are enjoyable, but when I say love, being able to dissect them and break them down, I've always been this way. I love to see what makes people tick, how they think, because people are like chemicals. You can hang around me and it's one reaction, but you can hang around somebody else and be a whole different person. And that always intrigued me. What are the inner workings of the mind? What are the things that we hide that we don't want the world to see? It's just like I was speaking with Mrs. Skurve just a few moments ago. She went to bed, you know, she's always going to bed early. And she was saying how there's just certain people she just is not going to deal with anymore or in this lifetime. It's not worth it. If you can do certain things past certain law lines and violations and do certain violations, it's not worth it. Right. And I say the same thing from this point on. I want to deal with whatever residue of pains I have left. Keep my blade sharp so I can cut through life and enjoy this vast big world, because I know people personally. And it's sad that they are caught up and trapped by their demons, by their pains. They never learn a lesson and they don't want to come out of it. And I can see that they're basically going to transition. And they basically said that I'm not changing just the way I am. Okay. Okay. You're, you're going to be stuck. How sad is it to be in this world and have the opportunity to learn so much today or even on YouTube, which I'm not a troll on anybody's page, but I like to learn things, you know, certain types of carpentry, certain type of masonry, certain type of creativity with what I do with the pen to learn how to do that better and execute. It is a big world out here. And that is why, like I've said before, I'm going to pull back the focus. I'm always going to speak on the issues of truth, of course. I'm not ever going to get into the uh, 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 tomfoolery. But I'm going to speak on different things that impress me upon my heart because I'm bigger than just a category. And there are many people who don't want to see that. To me, it's called growth. For some, Lance, your channel must always be about white supremacy and uh, 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 black excellency. Yes, always. Excellent. But focusing on, I'm gone from them people. We're in the system. I'll speak about that. But I'm not going to be tied down because I'm butthurt that white America didn't love me and, and whatever. You see, when you have that kind of mentality, it's because you thought that you were better than the niggas that were there. And I'm going to say it that way. Or some of the niggas that were tired of the niggas that were around them because we're not niggas. I know that. Right. But they have that mentality, but push themselves up over and they realize they're not looked at any different than all of us collectively. And that's painful for some people as they have pushed their nose up and thought they were accepted. Right. But I'm not angry. I'm at peace with myself. America lost a good one in me you know what I mean so now that I'm here why am I still just talking about narrow experiences unless I want to help somebody come out of their pain stuff I've learned I'll always go in the past and dig up the old dusty experience and say hey this is what I went through back in 1989 here let's talk about this because it can help you but to sit here like I'm chanting something uh, nobody want to hear that you want you want to be informed you want to be entertained, you want to be engaged, 
you want people to understand you and that's that's what I'm going to do from now on you know and I feel so free and so the talents that I have that the world doesn't know about insights and different perspectives and stuff and I can't wait to share it and nobody's going to stop me I've been through so much you just don't know and I still can't understand you know I have to say this too there are a lot of people out here who it's so easy for somebody to buy a camera or use their phone and get a free YouTube account and sit up on a platform or on their soapbox and blah, 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 blah. That's part of the big distraction because there are many people who have wonderful things to say that can help to build your life. And there are a lot of people who shouldn't even be allowed to get on YouTube and talk the stuff they talk. But everybody wants their chance. And that's part of the bigger plan to get us so caught up in the need to be seen, in the need to talk, in the need to... And when you realize there's some now, these trolls... Some of these butthurt people who may not get the traction they think they should get that now I'm exposing myself to the world. I should be getting millions of dollars and I should I should be having millions of people follow me because I'm great. And you realize that, you know, a couple people roll by, but ain't nobody paying you no mind. I never had to go through that because from young, I knew my worth. There are things my parents involved me in that gave me a sense of self-worth that if you try something and you don't knock it out of the ballpark, it's OK. Do this other. But it should not be for the attention right? I do what I do because I do it every day. This is part of my life. It's not an attention thing. That's why I can do it every day. Uh, one person told me, oh, you need to be missed. Do it once a month for 15 minutes. What? what? As big as my mouth is? Do you talk to people in the street or in your life once a month for 15 minutes? Brrr. Can't talk. Only 10 seconds. Next month, I'll give you 15 minutes. <laughs> Doesn't work that way. That's like saving up all the feces in your stomach and going to the bathroom once a month. You're walking around looking like you're pregnant and sweating all funky and breath stinking. It can't work that way. Follow your own rhythm. Don't try to keep it with anybody else. I'm built for this. I could do this every day. It shouldn't be it. But you have people that come at you when you are doing something that they can see the world appreciates in a unique way. And now, because they realize how challenging it can be, how does he do it? How does he make so much go, you know, happen online? And now they want to attack you to get attention. They want to, they want to get a come up. They want to be noticed. 50 Cent used that technique when he was, you know, going against other rappers and rapping. But rap is a different thing, different creature. You don't need to come after me that way. You know, go out, find your passion. And when you're really passionate about something, the world will see that. But the world will see when you're doing something just for a dollar. They will see that. Because God knows I ain't getting nothing really big out here on these YouTube streets. You see what I mean? So that's not the goal. But anyway, let me get on down here. I'm going to do a little sketching right now. I may listen to some programs and some music and really enjoy the evening before I go to bed. I can do more shows, but you know, why? We did enough today. We got to know when to say when. Nice little cup of tea, chamomile tea. Relax a little bit. See what Mr. Skirv has up on those, on those cupboards. And just enjoy myself and climb the bed and have a really good sleep. But I ain't getting up until I really wake up. Uh-uh. No. Just free flow and everything will take care of itself. Anyway, much love to you all. Leave your comments below. But understand the pain will disappear when the lesson has been learned. Pain will give you a lesson. Pain lets you know things are just not right and it's just needs to be dealt with. Face it and you'll never have to deal with it again. It's just like paying up some bills that were piling up and you're like, Phew, I got rid of that one. No more. I had a recent one to pay, pretty big on my website. And um, Phew, I'm glad that one is over until next next year. I'm going to start saving up for it from now. Anyway, thank you all so much. Lance Curve out. Leave your comments. On to the next one. And I hope you got something out of this. And let me not be so rude. I hope this video reached you in the best of health, prosperity, not in the engineered system, but in the system of nature, and peace of mind. Because peace of mind, really, at the end of the day, is where it's all about. What, what it's all about. Where it's all about. I'm slipping. Anyway, much love to you all. Peace. The mosquitoes trying to bite me up out here. Bye-bye. Mmm. -hmm.